Um, peak flow also is another method of performing a pulmonary function test. If you've ever had any upper respiratory issues, um, any lung issues, they have you do a peak flow, and it's something that you could do at home. Um, I'll pull one out in just a minute. Um, but basically, it's a device that you are, it's kind of to rehabilitate your lungs. So if you had issues and you're trying to strengthen your lungs, they have you take this little peak flow and you are practicing at home and what you're trying to do is take a deep breath in and blow it out as forcefully as you can and it moves a little needle on the plastic device and then we can kind of just um, write it down and then bring it to your pulmonologist or to your primary care doctor and you keep a journal of it maybe every day, could be for two weeks, it just depends on you know what they're trying to do with the lungs and then it kind of just keeps track, okay this is how much hair that you, hair, Air, you're able to forcefully exhale, okay? <clears throat> it's kind of like an exercise so that you can strengthen your lungs. This test is a little bit different. This is called a PFT, otherwise known as a pulmonary function test, and this is to test the lung capacity, how much air you can take in and how much air you can forcibly breathe out or exhale, okay? Um, and it's really easy to do. We have two machines. I believe this printer is out of toner and it's out on its way in the, the actual cartridge, but this one works fine. So they all look a little different. These are manual PFTs. I've had some done that are really fancy that are attached to a computer um, and they have some really cute ones for children where they have a, a cake, like a digital cake. And the Black little candles. yes, the little kid will say, uh, will tell them blow really, really fast as, as fast as you can to blow out the candles, and it's a fun way to do it for children. They do it with adults as well; it just depends on what they have uh, in the facility. But this is kind of the easiest route to go. <clears throat> All right, so the machine works kind of like an old phone. <coughs> you have to kind of you know keep pushing the number to get to the letter. Okay, because you have to enter the patient's demographics and the machine will tell you exactly what you need to do. It'll prompt you what you need to do with this machine, okay? Um, it has to stay on the rest in order for it to charge and also for it to print. It will tell you, please put on the dock in order to print, okay? So you can't remove it in order to input the information. You can remove it, it um, but if you're, if you're done with that patient, it has to be put back on the dock and if you're going to print it, it has to be back on the dock there, okay? All right. So with this machine, because we can't have multiple, you know, patients' mouth on here, that would be disgusting, okay? <laughs> we have these little spirets, okay? So when you receive one of these, make sure that you put your name on the plastic wrapper with a Sharpie, and this will be your own spirette. So if I gave this to Rosie and I'm going to do my comp on Rosie, then Rosie needs to bring her spirette, okay? Um, if she loses it, we'll just give her a new one. That's fine, but this is what she's going to be practicing as a patient, okay? All right, so you have your spirette. So the most important thing of this uh, comp is educating the patient and coaching the patient because it can be very difficult, especially if someone has upper respiratory uh, issues or pneumonia or they're trying to strengthen their lungs or they have a lot of damage to their lungs. They won't be able to do this test. And if you have me do it, I'll probably pass out because it gets me very lightheaded and that's why we have the patient sitting down, okay? If you've ever, you know, blown a lot of balloons up for a party <clears throat> and you get lightheaded, this is the same thing, okay? But you're doing it a lot faster. <clears throat> All right, so um, let's have, let's see, that's good long. Yeah. Lindsay, okay, come on, have a seat. No, right now she is very, she is still not well. She's not talking today, by the way, so limit your questions with Ms. Newman, okay? All right, so we're going to identify the patient, obviously, right? Okay, so let's turn this machine on. Can you tell if you, your patient has like bronchitis or something? Because they wouldn't be able to. Um, yes, but that would be for the doctor to determine. Okay. In your head, you can go, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Come on, machine. I think I turned it off and turned it back on. No, no, 
Not sure if it's bronchitis or pneumonia, but we're gonna test her lung capacity. Um, and then I would turn on the machine and put in her demographics, patient name, date of birth. Um, sometimes it asks you for um, the blood pressure and the weight on different machines. This one also asks for um, ethnicity and also if they smoke and how much they smoke or if they've ever smoked before, okay? So we would also put that in there. Um, after, we're going to give her the spirette and um, educate her on how she's actually going to use this. So this machine also only works with these spirettes and this machine works with a different spirette, okay? So every machine has their own mouthpieces. So once we put it into the machine, it has a little arrow so that you know how to insert the spirette. You are not going to touch this mouthpiece, only the patient, especially after her saliva is going to be on it. So you want to make sure that you do not touch this piece, okay? Sometimes this machine, in order to reset it or to set a baseline, it tells you not working or need to, uh, need to set up a baseline. And what you do is cover this end once it's in the tube, once it's in the machine, I'll show you, you have to cover it and then press enter and it sets up a baseline, it kind of resets itself. So, and it does it periodically, it, it, there's no rhyme or reason for it, um, it just, you know, does, knows how to do it, so. All right. Why is there a hole at the bottom? So that the air es escapes. Because oh. mm -hmm. you're going to be taking an inhalation oh, yeah. and then exhalation, so you need somewhere to escape from. Okay. It's like a, so Otherwise, the spit would go in. Right, it would stay into in the mouthpiece, and that's not good. Thank you. I was thinking like a spit valve on an instrument, but you don't mm -hmm. open it, it's always open. <laughs> so on this one, because we're using the same mouthpiece, should we have, like, should we use gloves or something just to put it on? Um, you don't need to, because mm -mm, you're going to have, you want to make sure that your patient sees that it's not open and that you are opening this mouthpiece in front of them so that they're secure that it's just a one-time use thing. Oh, but like for kissing <coughs> here. For us reusing our... There. Um, you can if you want to, if you feel more comfortable, but really you're not going to be touching at all the mouthpiece. Okay. All right. So it gives you a couple op options in the main screen. It says perform test, view results, print results, configuration. You're not going to do configuration. So you're going to do perform test. And we're going to hit enter. And you're going to, uh, it asks you select a test. Do you want a new test or recall? So you can actually recall the previous test if you didn't get a chance to print it out. Okay. So we're going to say new. ID, just put any random number in there. We'll say one, two, three, four, five, okay? And you do have to hit, instead of the down, it has right and left arrows, and that actually goes to the next prompt, okay? And your name is Lindsay. So again, you have to keep hitting the number, kind of old school. Go to the next age. How old are you, Lindsay? 19. 19. <laughs> and how tall are you? Okay. And what is your weight? 190. So obviously, we can ask her or we can take it directly from her patient chart. Okay. And are you Caucasian? Yes. Okay. Okay. And she is female. Are you a smoker? No. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you have asthma? Uh, no. Oh my. Sometimes they say they don't have smoke and they smoke or they're vaping. That's still the same thing, right? Anything? Smoking. Smoke anything. anything. Yes, smoke okay. anything. Okay? All right. So it asks what no way. you want to do. <laughs> FBC or FBL, title FBL or SVC. We are doing FBC. Okay? For spinal capacity. So we're going to hit enter, and then it asks, here's the baseline setting, block spirit until prompted to blast out and hit next, okay? So what I'm going to do is open this up, okay, and mouthpiece, remember, I'm not going to be touching because that's where her mouth is going to go. I'm just going to enter this right through. And I'm going 
after you hit enter. You're only blocking the bottom. Okay, now it says to blast out. Okay. And we may have to have it blast out before the actual test. Okay, we'll do that. All right, so it's asking to blast out before the actual baseline. All right, so now I'm going to educate the patient what we're going to do. Okay, so Lindsay, um, do you get faint easily at all? Okay, do you have any um, shortness of breath right now? You doing okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to do is have you take three giant breaths, okay? So you're gonna take one huge giant breath, and when I tell you to forcefully breathe out, that's what you're going to do. So an example would be, okay? So it's not mm -hmm. a prolonged blowing, it's a, just one direct blow out, okay? So as um, you're blowing out or exhaling, I'm going to coach you to keep going, keep going, keep going. You'll hear a series of beeps, and when I tell you to stop, that's when you're going to stop, okay? okay? If you need a break in between, just let me know because we're going to do three, okay? okay? All right, and so when like, I give you the mouthpiece, you want to go ahead and put your mouth around it so that it creates a seal and there's no air escaping, okay? okay? And I'm gonna let you move. All right. So this is going to set up a baseline really quick, okay? okay? So put your mouth around it, okay? And hold on just one minute and have this time. Okay, go ahead and take one deep breath in and blast out. <gasps> keep going, keep going, keep <laughs> going. Okay. Sorry, okay. That's okay. So it's harder for the patient to do. You have mm -hmm. to coach them. Keep going, keep going. You're almost there. You can do it. Whatever it takes for the patient. And then you'll start to see them and they'll... <laughs> right and it does take a lot of um, out of the patient so they might get dizzy so you want to give them a break they might even almost feel like they're going to vomit okay so I mean that's completely normal when you're doing this test so you just want to make sure that you know they're they feel comfortable that they're not you know feeling embarrassed and just give them the break in between so okay. do they have to ma do the baseline for every patient? Not everyone. Okay. It's, just the, it's just the machine. It, it just determines when, okay. when it wants it done. Okay. <clears throat> so now it tells you, blow out longer. So if it wasn't a good test, it will tell you the patient needs to do it again. Sometimes when we're practicing here, we're just going to take what <clears throat> we get because we don't want you guys to pass out. Um, but just know that if the machine tells you that, the patient has to keep going. And there are some patients that can't. So we have to dictate patient could not complete test or not complete second round of the FBC mm -hmm. so that the doctor understands it was impossible, okay? All right, so uh, it says to blow out longer, okay? So we're gonna redo this again. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Okay, sorry. You can put it over your mouth and then take a deep breath, okay? Take a deep breath and look. Keep going, keep going. So you have to keep <laughs> okay. 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 I want to breathe in when okay. it's on. You have to keep it in your mouth. Okay. 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 When you're blowing out. All right. So you tell me when you're ready. Okay. Take one deep breath and out. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Oh, so it beat like does that other yes. beep at it the end? Then it goes to a different screen okay. when it's taking the actual I test. I don't think mm -hmm. I'm very good. With so it says blow out <laughs> longer, okay? So now what I want you to try to do is take a deep breath and just <sighs> okay. do that, okay? okay? Don't try to blow it and prolong it. You're just okay. going to take a deep breath and out, okay? okay. Forcefully. <clears throat> okay. Deep breath in and out. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay? <laughs> it's not going to take it. It's deep. Oh, sorry. I can't do it. It's so hard. I can't. Yep. Blow out longer. All right. All right. So let's say she's a patient that cannot do it, right? She's having some pain in her lungs. So we, we gave it the best shot that we could. So we're going to go to quit. And we're going to go to print because it's going to pick up and analyze whatever she could do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take, have you take the plastic here, this is now yours. Okay. okay? So go ahead and you, you can put the plastic on there and then remove the mouthpiece from me please. Okay, so I don't touch it at all, she does it. I only touch it when I put it in, okay? So now I'm going to put it onto the dock. It says add, print, data, or post. So I'm going to hit print. And then it says please connect device to cradle. So I'm going to put it on here. And it's going to print the test for me. Cool. 
So even though it told her to blow longer, you it still got some information. Yes, definitely. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be as accurate as we'd like it to be because she was not able to blow out the way the machine would like, but it's still going to give us um, information for the doctor to be able to diagnose her. Okay, cool. Does that mean that my lungs are weak? Hmm? Does that mean that my lungs are weak? Um, it could be. It's really. It's a really hard test to do. Um, sometimes I, I believe it's this machine. It tells you um, on some of these. It is this one. It'll tell you what the machine thinks your lungs are aged at. So if you're wow. 19, it might say you're you have the lung capacity of a 40 year old. Okay? Should you be concerned? That doesn't mean that you know, she has cancer or anything or her lungs don't work of that nature. It just could be that she was not able to forcefully do that at this time. So it, it just depends. At the end of the day, this is what the doctor sees. They will analyze and then they will come in and talk to Lindsay and say, what, you know, why was this so difficult? What kind of troubles mm -hmm. were you having? And then they'll do further testing to just, you know, determine what diagnosis she actually has. Okay? But it is hard to do, especially if you have bronchitis or you have shortness of breath or you 